So um, the presentation is going to be very detailed. Light. First of all, thank you very much for having me here. I'm sorry if I've lost my accent. So several people have told me that I have in the 20 years I spent in England. Um, it's a great privilege to come back home, even if it's only for a few hours. Uh, the presentation won't be uh, full of detail, uh, but I want to give you a kind of a flavour of the sorts of things that are going on uh, on the carbon market. Um, so of my experiences on the CDM and talk about the future. Uh, I'm fully aware that, uh, for those of you that know the carbon market, we're not in uh, great straits at the moment. Carbon price is very low. Uh, prospects of the carbon price going up uh, don't seem very high in the medium term. Um, and uh, in that sense, uh, there's a lot of depression in, amongst carbon market players. Um, that said, this is a, a long-term uh, uh, problem and a, a long-term issue. Um, and while one might not see a lot of change in the medium term, uh, in the longer term, the carbon markets uh, will work again. And I'm conscious of that because I have worked on it for about 10 years and been through all the phases of it. I, I remember when I first started working on it, I was told it would never happen. Uh, then I was told that prices would be 90 euros a tonne and industry would leave Europe. Um, then it turned out they weren't 90 euros a tonne and there was a carbon price collapse. And we've gone through various evolutions. Uh, we're now on a low carbon price again. Um, I think the most important thing I would say about uh, carbon markets from my perspective is they're, they're not a, an end in themselves, they're a means to an end. Um, they're about reducing the costs of dealing with climate change uh, and they have collateral benefits associated with them. Um, and that's another way of saying that we're not going to get a carbon price or these instruments are not going to deliver without uh, mitigation targets, tough emission reduction targets. And I'm lucky enough to work for a government that wants the EU to move to 30% as soon as possible, looking around. Um, basically to uh, drive domestic mitigation and green growth as, as is seen from a UK perspective, uh, but also to drive carbon markets. Um, I would say that uh, working on the CDM, certainly a lot of the uh, issues that we've had to deal with are, are delivering an efficient mechanism to deliver uh, a low carbon price, essentially to deliver uh, cheap abatement options to the world. Um, uh, but that said, the CDM has had a, another role, uh, perhaps more... Um, uh, processorizing, have I said that right, role in the sense that um, many people don't know what to do about climate change, find it a little bit daunting to deal with. Um, and the CDM has demonstrated across the world in 70 countries, as I'll get on to, um, what it is possible to do about climate change and created constituencies of people that would uh, never have met before. I, I'm always amused. I've got a, quite a pompous <coughs> British uh, lawyer friend who several years ago would ring me from paddy fields in China to say he was doing deals with Chinese farmers on, on emission reductions. And, and for me, this epitomized exactly what the, the carbon market has done. It's brought together uh, a range of you know, finance, agriculture, technical experts, uh, and uh, demonstrates what's possible to do. Anyway, my first picture, um, the talk of CDM, the carbon market after Durban. I have to thank somebody in the audience for this. As a member of the Irish delegation took it, uh, because Ireland is situated beside India. And this is a kind of seminal moment in the negotiations for those that were there. Uh, it's a bit like a rugby match at the end, um, where we agreed something called the Durban Platform and a negotiation on a new treaty. Um, and while there wasn't a lot agreed on mitigation, as I said was the most important bit probably of all of this, um, there's a further discussion about what the targets should be and how people are going to contribute to it, there was an agreement on uh, another process to develop new market mechanisms, which I'll get to. Um, so, let me talk a little bit more generally. Hopefully I'll be quick, and you'll forgive me for the lack of uh, figures. Um, it strikes me whenever I talk about the CDM, and I've been doing, been the chair for the last year, I meet a lot of angry people, um, and I can't figure out why they're angry with me. And it's controversial necessarily <coughs> because it deals with climate change, which some people reject as happening. Um, others say that the CDM and, and market instruments are insufficient to deal with climate change, and others are merely depressed. So there's a whole range of people that are angry with uh, the CDM for not delivering on climate change, or, in fact, for trying to address it. Um, and that's one constituency. I then have dealt with a lot of people that hate markets and market instruments. They feel that this is neo-colonialism and unleashing market forces across the world and delivering negative impacts. Um, and others that say, again, the price signal is inadequate, the system is inefficient and uh, in inefficiently regulated, um, or are merely depressed about the carbon price. And then finally, you've got international cooperation, which is um, something that you either like or don't, but it certainly doesn't work as well as it might and doesn't <coughs> deliver as quickly as it should. Uh, but the CDM involves all three of these things, and 
for me, it demonstrates what's possible. It's certainly not uh, enough, uh, but um, it, it does work. Uh, we, we have a, a 10 member board that uh, supervises this mechanism and, and we, we have delivered in our way. Not enough, but, but, um, but something. I think the other thing when you look at this is, is to be confident in the long-term future. Because climate change is happening, it's a long-term problem and it's not going to go away, even though people might want to put their head in the sand about it. So that gives me confidence that it will be addressed, because I'm an optimist. Um, it's pretty clear that you're not going to get the level of investment that you need without market instruments. Um, and for that reason, because it reduces the costs of doing something, um, I'm pretty confident that market instruments are part of the future, and Durban, I think, would have reinforced that. Uh, and the third issue is that you can't, I think everybody has to uh, do an amount of domestic action to contribute, but you can't solve this problem without international cooperation. It's a global problem, a ton of carbon is a ton of carbon, uh, wherever it's emitted. Uh, and so you need to have uh, international cooperation work to deliver on it. By the way, that's the top of my head. Uh, um, so, vast generalities so far. I'll do a little bit of detail. Um, what is the CDM? Well, it's created the Kyoto Protocol. Um, it is a project mechanism which makes it difficult. Um, essentially what it does is it produces emission reductions in developing countries, um, which can be sold to developed countries who have targets um, to meet those targets. Um, the market at the moment is 70% in the EU, the EU ETS, because it's probably the only major economic bloc that's delivered a carbon market. Um, and the CDM has been driven primarily by that. And so far, as 861 million tonnes of carbon, 3,800 3, projects in about 70 countries. So while it's the second biggest carbon market, the EU is the, big, is, is the biggest, um, it's got the broadest reach, and it operates in places as diverse as Burkina Faso to China. Famously, half of the projects and the emission reductions come from China, um, or about 70%, dropping down to 50 recently. Um, so it's got massive reach. People have got different ideas in their heads about what it's about. Uh, for some, it's uh, sending too much money to China. That would be a very American critique of it. Um, there are large industrial projects, about 20 of them, that are highly profitable. And the vast majority of credits have come from there, and the prices have been very high. That said, it forgets a whole range of smaller scale projects across the world. This is an example of one, I believe, in India, uh, increased efficiency in brick kilns. There are thousands of them, many of them with uh, environmental and, and other benefits. Um, CDM board, um, essentially 10 members from around the world with quite different expectations of what the job is, uh, were independently uh, uh, appointed in the sense that we act in a personal capacity and elect our own uh, uh, people. I was elected chair at the beginning of the year, uh, not by any government, but by the members of the board. Um, and we have an incredibly difficult job to do. The two core um, jobs are additionality, ensuring that these projects actually deliver real emission reductions, um, i.e. they wouldn't have happened anyway, and that the tons of carbon that uh, are associated with our calculations um, are correctly calculated. A massive controversy at the moment we have um, coal plants being credited, which I can talk about where there's a, a big dispute as to whether they're both additional and whether the baseline is, is appropriately set. Uh, in the past we've had similar controversies around a range of things, HFCs, the industrial gases being, being another. Um, some people view this as being a quite technocratic uh, analytical exercise. If you're an economist, you think financial analysis is the best. If you're a uh, technologist or an engineer, you think that uh, technological benchmarks and uh, predictions of technological improvement are the best. And we have both economists and engineers within the board that make arguments around that. I can talk about it in, in greater detail. For me, uh, I think what's forgotten, there are many people that claim these projects are just not additional, they would have happened anyway, or that they're clearly additional. It's plainly a, a judgment call. You can't actually know or say what would have happened in the absence of the CDM. Uh, and there's a judgment call which various pieces of evidence will support or not support. And we make difficult judgment calls all the time. The other issue is sustainable development. Um, the CDM is meant to deliver sustainable development. And of course, that term means a lot of things to a lot of people and different things to a lot of people. Um, we have done a report on the sustainable development benefits of projects, and it indicates that quite a large number of them have either social or environmental benefits. Typically, um, we, we've had a whole range of, say, pig, pig farm projects in Indonesia, where uh, at the beginning you had open sewers, which were prone to explosion in some uh, examples, which are now regulated, capture the gas, and provide energy to local communities. Uh, and hundreds of examples of, of projects where there's a, an environmental or social benefit. 
um, attached to them. Um, at the same time, we've had controversies because the expectation that that phrase brings forward, um, the most difficult things that I've had to deal with during the year have been accusations of human rights abuses, where people have suggested that the CDM itself is driving human rights problems in developing countries, which I think is somewhat unfair in the sense that uh, I, I don't think that the CDM itself drives human rights abuses, but uh, at the same time, I think we're probably ill-equipped to deal with difficult situations that we're faced with. Again, a problem of international cooperation. We work in 70 countries. Some of them have lower standards of environment, social, and, uh, and democracy uh, than one might have. So um, to go back to my three th themes, um, we have business, NGO, and countries arguing that we don't deal effectively with climate change. We don't uh, regulate the market effectively, or we've unleashed market forces in a, in a dangerous way and that we are an inefficient body, that the international cooperation that we exercise doesn't work very well. Um, and the CDM has got itself a bit of a bad name, I, I think quite wrongly. Um, now, wh why that's the case, I think it's taken a, a long, long time for us to become sophisticated in uh, what we do, and even longer to become sophisticated in, in how we communicate. Uh, but the CDM has got a certain reputational problem. Um, also, this year, we've been faced before Durban with the idea that we're not sure whether the Kyoto Protocol continues. We're not sure whether there will be mitigation commitments um, from major parties. Um, and the CDM itself was a bit of a political football between the parties to the um, climate change negotiations, with some parties saying, unless you do the Kyoto Protocol, you can't do CDM, so you won't have access to this cheap abatement potential. And others saying, we will have access to it regardless of whether Kyoto happens or not. Um, and in that context, the board decided that um, we would need to, one, um, perhaps restore our reputation or at least open up a dialogue with uh, all the stakeholders with all of their problems, whether they relate to climate or social impacts or whatever, and invite them to make their critique, a fundamental critique of the CDM, wh what, uh, what they think is wrong with it and how it might be improved. Uh, but also to go around to various um, actors who are developing carbon markets at the moment, which I'll get on to, and ask them what they want out of the CDM. Um, the European policy context is that, um, as you know, from 2012, um, the CDM will only be, uh, the CDM can be purchased or, or new projects, and LDCs are the only things that are valid in, in, in the CDM. So uh, less developed countries, sorry, I've got a... Uh, an acronym problem, but less we, were, we are only buying from less developed countries in, in, in the EU. Um, and, th and that basically consigns the CDM from a European perspective only um, to a certain limited amount of emissions and, and a small number of countries. Uh, at the same time, Australia has come online with their emissions trading scheme, which is beginning to deliver demand, about 300 million tonnes, I'm told, uh, to the system from 2015. So part of this dialogue is to go out to those that are developing emissions trading schemes, including in China, California, other places, and ask them what they want out of it. The EU has, seems to have lost faith with the system, um, whereas other countries are, are just coming on stream. Um, the EU will, of course, be a key stakeholder because uh, one of the decisions that needs to be made about the future of the EU ETS is um, how additional demand would be put into the system. I can say that confidently from a UK perspective anyway. Um, the prices are depressed, and while there are many exercises seeking to exclude supply from the system, they are suboptimal uh, in the sense that um, the best thing to do would be to increase demand and increase the levels of emission reductions uh, from, from a climate perspective. So all is not lost in the EU, and it is possible in the context of a move to 30% or perhaps even more um, that the EU might buy a proportion of, uh, uh, of its effort from the CDM again. But there's a new kid in town since Durban, um, and I'm terrible at this. Um, this is a terrible slide. That is the conference centre in Durban. Um, we agreed, and as part of the team that agreed, we agreed to establish new market mechanisms uh, during the Durban uh, negotiations. It's something that the EU, I'm putting on an EU hat for, uh, here, uh, has been arguing for for the best part of four years and has mainly been rejected by uh, developing countries. One, because of a love of the CDM, um, and two, because it's seen as a, these new market mechanisms are seen as a way of, of forcing targets on developing countries, two big problems with pushing it. But the EU policy has, has, has basically been um, driven by the analysis that um, the CDM delivers credits from business as usual in developing countries, but as we move forward, we need developing countries to add their own mitigation actions to 
um, the mix. I, they need to start contributing to emission reductions. And the CDM doesn't seem like a, a, an obvious instrument to, to do that. It, it could happen, but um, it was decided we needed a political conversation about the source of market instruments that would um, deliver mitigation action by developing countries. The other problem is that the CDM is a project-based mechanism only, uh, and therefore necessarily delivers at a, a smaller scale than might be possible if you had a, a, a sector or segment of the economy approach. And that's been be behind the new market mechanism proposal. Um, and then finally, we've had uh, one objective, which is that we need to, if we're looking at a world where the carbon market, and it is an idealistic proposition, but, but I think a necessary proposition that we, we will have a large carbon market, if we're going to have a carbon market where 30% of emission reductions that we achieve in the world are um, going to be traded, i.e. that the carbon market represents a substantial proportion of the finance for emission reductions, we need to have some surety in the accounting uh, for that. It's, it, there's no point in us uh, reducing our emissions 50% or 90% by uh, 2050 uh, without us all having security that what we're buying and selling uh, has been accounted for according to the same system. And again, this proposal from, from the EU has been, in one sense, a way of capturing all of the bottom-up initiatives that we're seeing and trying to accommodate the Chinese uh, trading scheme. Like, ironically, China's moving forward more quickly than the US, which a couple of years ago might have seemed strange, to accommodate those systems within the international framework and make sure that they are usable towards international targets when they come along. So that's a, a, a kind of a, a quick review of where we are. There's a, a lot of uncertainty. Um, I'm going tomorrow to launch the review. We have 10 independent experts uh, appointed by me and Christiana Figueres of, of, of the UNFCC. Um, they come from civil society, business, and from the uh, public sector. Um, they have hopefully very little to do with carbon markets and are not directly involved in the game. Uh, they're credible independent experts. They will meet and they will run the show in terms of the CDM review. And the questions for them will be, um, how do we deal with the uh, criticisms around additionality, around uh, sustainable development, human rights, efficiencies of the system? How might we scale up the CDM? Maybe it could be a competitor to these new market mechanisms. Um, how do we make the CDM more accountable to its stakeholders? Um, how, how, how would we get that to happen? How maybe would the CDM start to uh, contribute to mitigation action? And, and those are pretty clear questions that have been raised in the sorts of consultation uh, responses that we've had so far. Um, I'm not clear what the answers to that are, but we're expecting a report. Uh, my hope and vision of it was it would be a kind of a stern review for the CDM. Uh, I.e. something that everybody could sign up to, um, uh, but though perhaps not everybody signed up to the Stern Review, Frank. Um, but uh, in a sense, a, a document that everybody might look to uh, uh, as at least a basis for, for the future discussion. I know that we are going to review the rules of the CDM next year, so hopefully it will be an input to that and it will lead to a, a CDM that the EU but also other countries have more confidence in using. And when they do, as I think they have to, move to higher levels of mitigation, it might be something that they would use. And that's really what that is about. Um, why would they, given that these new market mechanisms are now on the block? Um, well, the time scale for developing the new market mechanisms is such that you can't really see them being implemented much before 2015. We've agreed the principle. We'll be working on the rules um, for the next uh, year at least, and probably for a long time after that. Um, the EU is going to be making a submission on new market mechanisms at the end of the month, and hopefully we'll spell out a program for their implementation. But we don't see them coming on stream with a lot of supply much before 2015 and probably after that. So in the interim, it is the CDM or nothing if you want to be involved in carbon markets. Um, again, one must, one must make a calculation about when s substantial demand might <laughs> again come on stream. Maybe it won't be much before 2015. But if you believe that, there, that we, we will move to higher levels of ambition uh, between now and, and, and the latter part of this decade, uh, the CDM still has a lot of life in it, and we need to have a reformed and, and workable mechanism to, uh, to deliver on, on that demand. Um, I think I'll stop there. There's quite a lot of generality, if you'll forgive me. I do have a lot of slides with, with uh, <coughs> pictures of the project and numbers and prices, um, but I just thought it might be a bit of an introduction to a Q&A. So thank you. Thank you.